Okay, so the 2022 Brunson has been pretty much completely redesigned. New frame, new wheel options. So this one comes in the fantastic mullet bike, mixed wheel size, business in the front, party in the back, 29 in the front, 27 and a half in the back. And these type of bikes are becoming more and more interesting to me personally and overall in the marketplace. They're starting to grow a little bit more and more each year. Not every brand has taken upon it yet. Like even Trek, one of the bigger major brands, just released a new 2022 Remedy in the 9.8. And it is still just 27 and a half all around. I really thought they were going to do a mullet, but maybe to them it's not as proven yet. So what is a mullet bike? Like I said, it is a 27 and a half inch rear wheel on a 29 front. So a couple big benefits to this are, one, it allows the rear chain stays to be a lot shorter. So the distance from here to here, a lot closer, a lot tighter. You're able to get a lot more on that agile, kind of nimble feeling bike with that back end not being so long behind you. You can really cut those corners short, throw it around a little more, a little less weight, including rotational weight, a few different things. As well, fitting that 27 and a half on the back, it means it's a little lower rear end, so it's easier to throw and lift things up over the top of obstacles and such. A 29 inch wheel is already so high, a lot of the times it takes a bit more effort to jump high, whereas a 27 and a half is just easier to pull up. Match it with a 29 on the front and you actually get a fast rolling bike which will roll over obstacles, attack things a lot better. With a bigger wheel, you're able to kind of roll up on logs and other obstacles a lot easier and smoother. So you're able to keep that continuing speed with that front end being a little bit more agile. If you have 229s, you have a bit overall longer bike, including chain stays and overall rear wheel. So it becomes a little more bike to handle, essentially. Dropping to a 27 and a half really makes a big difference. And it's a lot different than like the homemade ones where you were just a 29 on the front and you just took off your 29 and put a 27 and a half on it because you're not getting that big benefit of the chain stays dropping as well. So having a custom built one, big, big difference. They did change up quite a lot of the other things, but nothing too drastic. The geometry is tweaked. The frame is tweaked all to allocate this wheel. If you were just putting a 27 and a half, you're going to drop your bottom bracket pretty aggressively. So you got to tweak that whole frame, the whole VPP suspension to bring it back up so you're not going to get pedal strikes or be too low to the ground when you're turning corners. If you're uneven, it just, it's got to be full redesign of the frame to match that. And then they go with a bit slacker of a fork as well. So it just makes it a little bit more rolly. I mean, it's teeny minor differences in those kind of geometry specs. And again, it all just kind of keeps that geometry still where it wants to be, but really capable at the same time. So the model behind me here is the R-Spec and this year the R-Specs are actually very well put together. They come in a little bit higher price but honestly it's well worth it. You're getting the Fox Float X on there so it is that kind of entry-ish level. Hard to say entry level when you're getting a huge 140 mil travel setup with an extra chamber on it. So it includes this extra kind of overflow chamber, really takes in those hard hits really well. Better for big jumps, big drops, big rollers, anywhere where you might need that full actuation of it, gives that high pressure chamber to really slow that down and control it. So it's not entry level, but you know, all in relativity. With the front, you are getting a RockShox Lyric Select. So that is an excellent front fork. It's relatively lightweight. It's got good performance, good tuning, good damping control. Obviously, you don't get the super finite ones with it. Finite, finite, whatever it is. Um, you don't get the super crazy controls where some of the higher end models, you can really dial in the high speed, low speed, all that kind of stuff. But it's still a really nice front fork. Race face rims, these are the AR30s, so they are really well put together. They've got DT Swiss hubs. They'll roll fast. They make a nice amount of noise. And then on top of that, they have some Maxxis tires as usual to it. Something most bikes are starting to come with, like Maxxis is really taking off. And it's, I don't know if it's the fan base or if it's just this perfect do everything tire. It's got a lot of traction to it. It's got a lot of grip to it, but it's got a lot of forgiveness and fast rollability. So it's not 
terribly slow. It's not like you're going to a full enduro bike uh, tire, you're still getting a pretty good setup. On the rear, they do put the XO model on it, so that one is even more durable. It's gonna take bigger hits, be more puncture resistant, it does add a little bit of weight to the tire, but it means, again, you can really slam this bike around. Has Santa Cruz's famous VPP suspension, so really good on those cornered edges. Really good for harsh, aggressive, kind of out of nowhere hits, where it just works so smoothly. And it is some of the smoothest styles of suspension I have been on. It works really, really well. Both the stem and the handlebar on this one are Bogue Tech. That is something Santa Cruz likes. They kind of go Bogue Tech to start, and then they jump up into the race face higher end stuff. But it works really well. 800 mil wide bar works really well. I enjoy it pretty wide. Um, many people are cutting it down to maybe around the 760. But on a bike like this, it gives a bit more wide throw. And it really gets that momentum following around if you leave them a little wider. Downside is, obviously, many of the trails are cut for previous generation bikes where 690 used to be kind of like a standard cross-country kind of width. Which is, these just aren't going to fit. So you gotta watch out for that. Brake wise, it's got the SRAM G2 setup on it. Works really well again. Four piston, lots of bite to it. They are SRAM, so it does have a little bit of softness through to it, but I kinda like it. It feels like you're applying the brake, but it's a very gentle amount. It's not going too hardcore. And then on top of that, you have the SDG dropper post, which is a really nice one. Still cably ran, there's no fluid or anything there, like the RockShox higher end models. But honestly, it's really easy to maintain. You don't need to bleed it. It works really well, and it's fast and snappy, and seems to have really good longevity too. Haven't had really any issues longevity-wise with this drop post wearing down, and not much play, if really any at all. Last thing they have is the SRAM NX. So reasonable, nothing wrong with it. It works really, really well. Really, the only downside to the NX compared to GX is it is technically a little slow, but more importantly, it's a little heavier. With a bike like this, you're getting such a lot of suspension, you're not really worried about being the lightest bike in the pack. It's still gonna climb relatively well, but this one is more about the flowy, fun descents where you're just gonna slam through everything and have a blast. Sure, you might not beat that top fuel racer or that Santa Cruz blur racer to the top of the hill, but you're gonna have a lot more fun coming down and that's a guarantee. So like I said, it's got 160 mil travel on the front. I think earlier I said 140, but it actually has 150 in the rear. It is something which um, is kind of super usable everywhere now. The suspension is getting so efficient. You don't really feel any lag when climbing. I think on their website, it's like, if in doubt, take the Bronson out or something like that. And it does make a lot of sense for this bike. You're gonna roll fast. You're gonna have a lot of fun on it. It's not super serious, but it's a serious bike at that. So you're able to really do a lot with this kind of geometry setup, the rear wheel being smaller, chain stays brought in, nice slackness. It's a really great setup. Honestly, I think this is gonna be a very good contender for Santa Cruz. The 5010, I believe, is normally their best-selling bike. But I think it's leaning more towards this, unless they have some tweaks coming to the 5010 potentially for 2022, 23. It's kind of getting blurred lines between the model years now. Who knows what's happening with all that. With the delays, it's you've got to announce bikes early, but then they're not coming till spring anyway. So what model year I think is going to get blurred away a little bit. Kind of previous to what they used to do where they just used model numbers and they were on the Tallboy 4 and such. So I think they'll kind of wean off the model numbers or the model years and go back to more model numbers to make it a little more unison for the way the market is right now. All right guys, so last up, the Bronson is that all purpose trail shredding, park, fun, everything bike. If in doubt, take the Bronson out. It's a really good saying they came up with. It really can do everything. And even though it's quite a big suspension bike for cross country sakes, it is still gonna roll really fast. It's still got that high performance feel to it. It's still carbon fiber, so it's still relatively lightweight. You know, you're just at that 30 pound mark here. Santa Cruz's VPP suspension setup does add a little bit of weight compared to other models of bikes, but with that, you get a super stiff setup. You gain a lot 
from the VPP like movement and on top of that it's going to be a really nice carbon that's all they've got it in right now is carbon one or two C one is relatively lightweight really great setup two is very lightweight and I guess is much stiffer but I don't know if you'd notice it going to a carbon frame bike makes it quite stiff and then that VPP setup means that rear end is pretty much two separate one piece units but it just is solid there's no flex in it adding this pivot point over the front here multiple pivot points down makes it super responsive they have part spec it well that fox x flow is going to be superb it is going to really perform when you need it to again really the only things you're really missing from the suspensions is like that super fine-tuned detailing but for the most part honestly like unless you're going to retest the same spot over and over again set it up for a perfect track run you'll never need it. it most people won't notice the difference it takes really finite kind of detailing to do it and most people just want to get on the bike set it up they can give you the recommended pressures you'll get on it and you'll have a lot of fun on this bike all right thanks for stopping by my name's chris um good luck